What's going on, guys? Welcome to another live session with your boy, Franklin. So, I'm going to talk about, briefly, I'm going to talk about um, hypermasculinity, okay? It's really cold. We're in the middle of winter. It's a cup of tea. Right. Let's see who is online. If you can see me, hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Right. So I'm going to talk about the um, hyper, you know, masculinity. So basically, in the simplest form, hyper masculinity is basically the sort of like a, the template which the society has established for for donkey years on how um, men should be, you know, perceived in terms of, you know, our behavior, in terms of um, sexuality, in, in terms of aggression, in terms of, you know, um, display of our emotions. In fact, in, in terms of how we relate to and with the opposite sex. And um, I, I um, oh, what am I sipping on? It's... Um, <laughs> It's a cup of tea. Um, I also think um, hyper-masculinity breeds toxic masculinity, which, of course, has an um, adverse effect on the, on the overall society. You know, mostly us men and the white, wider society. So, without, you know, taking much of your time, this is going to be a shot... Um, live session um i just want to go straight into you know the the idea of hyper hyper masculinity you know a man you're meant to be you're you're expected to to be you know um uh project yourself as aggressive as um you know um oh thank you simeon Charles, thank you. You're expected to be aggressive. You're expected to come across as macho. I love that, John Anderson. You know, you're expected to be that macho man type of thing, uh, person. You're expected to, uh, you know, put the door down off the hinges and, um, you know, shut everything down. You're expected to be aggressive. So, for example, because of the way um, the template that the age old um, template that the society runs with. So that's why, I mean, of course, the society knows that, you know, men, of course, um, exhibit aggression or domestic abuse towards women. But at the same time, what the society does is the society show a blatant disregard for um, men that are, in fact, victims of domestic abuse. So even if you go to the police, uh, the, the behavioral the sort of behavior and attitude of the police when you, when you, if a man reports domestic abuse. So I'm talking hypothetically now, if I walk into a local police station and I tell them that, you know, I was just, I've just been assaulted by my partner. Oh, she beat me up or she hit me with a sharp object or something like that. They would look at me, they would look at my frame and they'll be like, oh, <laughs> come on, Franklin, you know, give me a break. Come on, man. What kind of man are you? You know, there's been, there are tons of evidences that I can give you. There's been times where, you know, even if you're telling other people, they, um, they, they would look at you and laugh like, you know, uh, oh, you, 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 you let a woman beat you up. Like, oh, <laughs> dude, man. Oh, you're, you're not man enough. I hear stuff like, you're not man enough. No. I'm, I'm a victim of domestic abuse. I've just been assaulted. I was caught off guard and I was, somebody inflicted assault on my person and you are you're trivializing it because why i'm a man i'm expected to be an alpha male i'm expected to you know to be able to dust it off and dust off my shoulder and keep it moving not talk and this also breeds into um uh, the sort of nature the attitude whereby men don't like um uh, it's the way the society is a sort of imposed on us um, sort of mentally and emotionally wired men. You know, it's right from childhood. It's like, um, you're not you're not meant to show emotions. You know, like oh, 
you know, I was having a conversation with someone about, I think a couple of weeks ago, and then someone was saying, oh, uh, some, some other dude, it was two guys, and he said, oh, somebody's mom died. He heard that somebody's mom died, and then he broke down in tears because that woman was like a mom to him growing up. So the other dude next to him, to my left-hand side, said, ah, come on, man, you know, uh, no, come on, don't be, don't be a letter B. I T C H. You know, I don't want to say that in the live session. You know, like, come on, man, that's girly stuff, man. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be crying just because somebody died. And my jaw literally dropped. I, and I said, wait, what? I'm not allowed to show my emotion because a loved one passed away just because I'm a man. And this guy started off with this long-winded argument about, you know, a man is not meant to. show his um, emotions. You're meant to be a man. You're meant to man up. So I said, what does that even mean? And he was like, oh, you know, you're, you, you're a liberal guy, Franklin. You're not, you're not alpha male. You know, I, I, I said, well, I'm meant to be, I'm, I'm meant to be toxic. I'm meant to, you know, so, 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 somebody died. Bro, I'm an emotional dude. If a loved one, even just watching a documentary, and maybe somebody's been subjected to racism or somebody's been subjected to uh, sort of like an abuse or assault and something grips your emotion. You know, I, I can shed a tear or two because I'm human at the end of the day. That's what counts. And like I was saying about toxic masculinity before I forget, it stems from this hyper masculinity whereby men mostly have been wired in a certain, and do and you know what's even deadly about toxic masculinity is you, as a man, not even knowing that certain parts of your behavioral pattern are in fact toxic. Somebody said it hurts so bad you can't even discuss it with your friends. They look at you like you're weak, like a grandma tooth, bro. Yeah, thank you. If a man opens up, especially with emotions, right, it's seen as a sign of weakness. I love that statement, and I'm going to come, come to something now. It's very common in our society. You're expected to just show that macho man persona all the time. And it's a lie. A man is broke. You are having, even it breeds into the attitude of men towards seeking things like medical help. Believe me, the hyper masculinity, like, you know, like the attitude towards going to your doctor. For appointments, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm all right, man. I'm cool, I'm cool, you know. You you know you are having a really bad pain towards your spine, your lower back, or you're, you're having some kind of pain in your groin, or your urine has changed color. I'm talking hypothetically now. Go book an appointment. Go butt naked in front of your doctor if you have to go butt naked. Go and get help. And you... Like, no, 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 I'll be all right, bro. No, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool. And this I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool sort of smokescreen and facade is why a lot of our men die are plagued with all sorts of diseases and health problems because sometimes it then gets too late and then you can't do anything about it and we just die off. Another thing is the hyper-masculinity breeds things like mental health problem that's very very common in the black community our attitude towards mental health problem is like you know we don't discuss it it's like a taboo i always ask a question who made these rules for god's sake how did we get to this point how are we so damaged that you know we just I like, I like this. Uh, it's so hard to mask. You don't even know how to deal with it. It's like you're filled up with pain uh, and it holds your soul hostage, bro. They say something like, oh, you're the only one. I beg, get over it. Yes. Unfortunately, even sometimes, excuse me, I've got to be a cold. Even your, you'll be surprised that the attitude of your, if you're a man in a relationship, Sometimes the attitude of your partner in the relationship towards you, especially when you're you're thinking, okay, I might be able to cry on my open up to my woman and tell her how I'm feeling. And even your woman might trivialize like uh, uh, like the saying Yoruba language, uh uh, she don't shock on your Korean now. 
Ah, uh -uh. oh, then she be obeying. Don't get me wrong. Let's be clear. I'm not here talking about um, a man, you know, um, in the name of, um, 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 how do I say, bringing out your emotions. I'm not asking you to be a spineless man. That's not what I'm advocating for because I'm not a spineless man. But the fact that we have to internalize a lot of, you see, life as a whole is toxic enough. Life is challenging. Life throws so much rocks at you every day. And then you live in a society where it's a form of discrimination, if you, if I can say, because I'm expected to get on with it. It's the same thing where a man, and please pay attention to me, right? Um, a man who, I'm a genuine man. I'm not trying to game a woman. I'm not trying to take advantage. I'm keeping it 100 with you. But life is crazy. Yesterday, I have I had a job. I was earning. I had my paycheck. I was doing good. Today, I'm jobless, right? Okay, that knocks your confidence. That dents your ego. That dents your pocket and stuff. But you see, sometimes where some partners, they find it hard to empathize with you. There is an undue pressure on your shoulder. Like, ah, you're a man. You, you, you have to get out and go and get money. You, 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 you must. Don't get me wrong. Of course, you have to push. You have to... See how, go back to your drawing board, how you can get the next daily bread to start coming in or find something to do. I get that. But the lack of empathy, just because you're a man, and it's like, you're not allowed to even say you're broke. Why? If I'm broke, I'm just broke. It's not a crime. But we live in a society where it's like, dude, you're not allowed to be broke. It's not like I'm, I'm broke and I'm sat on my balls just like, oh, yeah, I'm broke and I'm scratching my balls all day. But unfortunately, maybe where I was working, there was job losses, right? They had to cut jobs and I lost my job. And I'm out of employment for like a few months. I'm trying to get back on the employment ladder. I'm, I'm applying. I'm putting on my CVs. I'm, I'm doing all that. But just because I'm struggling now to be able to put bread on, my, on the table effectively as I would love to do or pay my share of the bill or be able to do things. And then I am put in a box of inadequacy. I am labeled as not being man enough. And you even hear things like, oh, a man should not even say hello to me, even to say, I want to buy you a cup of tea, just because, oh, so what are you doing at the moment? Um, um, I li recently got laid off, but I'm trying to get into an employment. Oh, that instantaneously, you know, makes the other party form an opinion, like, Ugh. they don't want to know the inner qualities of Franklin. It's like, hey, I don't, I'm not going to touch this guy with a barge pole. I don't want to have anything to do with you because your ass is broke. And if you look at the, the growth of uh, the internet, social media, and all that, it's breed so much. It's basically blown, amplified that toxicity that the society works with on a daily basis. It's like a man, you're not allowed to have a voice. People, thank you, I like that. People are so materialistic. There is a set amount of expectation. There's just this undue pressure that's being put on you as again, I keep repeating this disclaimer, okay? Because I know certain persons, they'll watch video because they already have their own preconceived notions. They don't like listening. They're not going to decipher what you're saying. They're not going to process it. And they're just gonna be like, oh, so this guy is here advocating for broke ass men. That's not what we're talking about. But this is real life. Let's call it spade a spade. Most men, because of shame, because of fear of shame, because of fear of being laughed at, because of, oh, how are they going to look at me? Um, what are they going to say about me? Oh, how is the family going to perceive me? Oh, how, what's the neighbor going to say? Because they're keeping up with the Joneses. Oh, because I, I'm a man. I've got to, I've got to have this way. But what you fail to understand that this man is a human being, right? Maybe I'm not earning so much. And I'm working on a couple of professional qualifications at the moment to, so that I can make a transition from here to there. But the society thinks they've got the right to put pressure on me. Like, hey, right here, right now, you're in, in, in inadequate. You're not man enough. What does it mean to be man enough? Do you get it? And also, the hyper-masculinity thing I was saying is it also affects men adversely, which also breeds misogyny because 
You think, oh yeah, I'm a man's man. A woman shouldn't have a voice next to me. So that toxicity is a vicious cycle that kills a lot of men. Because, you know, I'm a man. I'm a man. Oh, there was about five of us talking in here. The women have to leave the room. Or the women shouldn't have a voice because of this and this and this. And it's all a vicious cycle and web of toxicity that we set ourselves up in. And we just self-sabotage on a daily basis. The society has managed to force this template, this very evil template, down our lungs, and we've just managed to accept it. Let me see. Franklin, in, in, most, in some cases, the men put themselves under a lot of pressure. Of course, the men put themselves under a lot of pressure, I agree, based on how the society is wired. I've got a male friend going through a difficult time. I've tried to invite her for a drink, but his ego wouldn't let him accept my invite. Maybe if you persevere a little bit, you know, and you, you know, sometimes it's a case of trust. Can I trust you? You know, sometimes people pretend like they want to listen to you. They pretend like they care. As soon as people understand the A to Z of your current situation, right? They make a mockery of it. They take your story, they pass it on to the next and to the next. They laugh at you, they jump ship and they abandon you. It's very rare to find honest people. So sometimes when people hold back in terms of divulging their 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 information you know people are very reluctant because it's it's a case of not because i'm looking at you as a bad person but the, the truth is can i trust you with my business right so just just by telling some people that oh i'm currently unemployed right oh i'm so sorry about that you lost your job oh man that's really oh so what are you doing okay anyway nice chatting to you i'll catch you later right that person gets the hell out of your house Pick up their phone. Oh, oh, your guy, your 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 dude is unemployed. You know, dude, dude doesn't got a job. You know, ah, oh, he's yeah, 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 yeah. He's out of work, man. And then they start talking rubbish about you. These things happen. Uh, there is no such thing as toxic masculinity. We men need to stop participating in our own destruction. We simply need to understand as equal emotional even. Oh, of course there is toxic masculinity. Of course there is. I disagree with you. Toxic masculinity is is basically the, the the totally wrong perception of what masculinity should be about. Masculinity, uh, the toxic you know masculinity uh, allows you to 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 or, or not, not not even allows that's the wrong word makes you believe that oh oh yeah as a as a as a man you know yeah I'm a, I'm a man's man like for example oh because I'm, I'm i'm making money i'm the bread maybe maybe the major breadwinner of the family so because of that my woman that hasn't got a voice i should tell her when to go in and come out i should tell her she's not allowed to talk to anybody and stop because i'm the man I'm, this is my home i'm the head of the home that's toxic masculinity and that breeds if you pay attention that breeds into misogyny which destroys a lot of people so there is toxic masculinity. Check it out. Let me see what's going on here. I was talking to the, uh, the other time and one dude said, when men talk, women don't argue. Yeah, it's the nonsense that we were raised with. Man. You're correct. It's important. Let me see. Uh, some men have the biggest egos. I mentioned in the conversation that we women don't mind a broke man as it is temporary. We have a problem with a man who is comfortable with being broke. Thank you. Thank you, Mbali. I, I love that. There are two separate things. A man that just rests his balls on the couch and is just comfortable. Comfortable being the objective word in that context. With being broke. I, you know, I'm broke. I don't care. Man. I'm not bothered. That's a totally different type of conversation. But because a man is... Sometimes, you know, like, let's, I'm talking about employment now. I've seen situations where... A man lost his job or trying to get back into another job. And before you know, it depends on the type of industry and, and what the job market, what the economy is saying at the time. A month becomes two months, two months becomes three, becomes four, becomes five. And before you know it, it's a year you've been out of work. I've seen it happen to some of the nicest people. It's not because they are bums. It's not because they don't want to get a job. They're getting job interviews. They're just not gaining closure. They're not, they're not getting picked as the you know, best candidates and stuff. But, you know... Imagine in a in a house where, because like in relationships, for example, finance plays a major role. 
So sometimes when, this is why I'm saying it's very important that you and your partner are like best of friends, you're on the same page. So when there is financial pressure and both parties are not communicating effectively, you're not on the same page. So the woman might be the one pulling the weight or you might not have enough money to be able to cater for your bills and whatnot. And then the pressure goes on and then emotions are flying and then third parties by third parties i mean families maybe the woman's families i start talking and looking at the man like oh he hasn't got a job he's not worked for a year he's not pulling in any money and people start to have opinion this is uh, this is uh some of the ways that the, the society doesn't show empathy towards men enough if you get what i'm saying enough empathy towards men because there is a stereotypically generated perception of how men needs to be seen, you know, men should behave, you know, get on with it type of attitude. If if a woman if a woman slaps a man, the society uh, expects you to take it. A man is not allowed to slap a woman. So this is my own take. Why don't both parties just keep your bloody hands to yourself? But if a man is assaulted, like I said at the start of the video, the society expects you to just, you know, man up. You know, there are so many dudes out there. There's so many men that are battling depression. That are battling with depression. They, they're not going to seek medical help because they, they, they have unfortunately from childhood have been wired, mentally wired that, you know, it's, it's a man should not do this. And like I said, just seeking medical help. Most men wait until it's too late Sometimes it claims their lives before they go to the doctors because you think if I feel some type of lump in my genitalia, for example, I'm talking, we're adults here. I'm just talking hypothetically. I'm the type of dude, rah, faster than the speed of light. I'm running straight to the clinic. I'm going to go speak to a doctor like, yo, what's going on? Help me out. But a guy, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I can't go in there and just, you know, be talking about my, my, my stuff, you know, I, I, I can't do that, man, come on, man, I'm not going to go to the GP and tell the doctor that I've got a problem with my balls, you know, I, I can't do that. What if that's a sign of cancer? What if? And then, by the time it gets too late, you might have become terminally ill, and then you get obliterated off the surface of the earth, and you're gone. I, I've seen this happen as an example. Ah, me, if you pipe me, should you? <laughs> anyway, let's keep the conversation going on below. I think um, it's about a major orientation of the society as a whole. It's going to take a few generations for that to happen, but bit by bit, we can change our perceptions and uh, because I, I, it, it, it feeds into hypermasculinity, feeds into relationships, it feeds into the personal life of a lot of men, our health, uh, the way employers perceive men, the way women perceive men, the way men themselves perceive women. It's just a cobweb of complexity that the society has created and is causing a lot of problems. Men are very egotistical naturally, you know, with flex. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm cool, I'm cool. Behind that, all that animation of I'm cool, there's a man that's burning inside. There's a man that needs help. There's a man whose inner soul is crying for help. Anyway, let's keep the conversation going on below. It's a brief session today. It's your boy, Franklin. I'm of the opinion that hyper-masculinity needs to be effectively addressed. We need to be educated. We need to change our... And we need to really drop the stereotypically generated perception of men. And finally, this isn't talking about men who just rest their balls on the couch, who are bums, who are not trying to better themselves. We're not talking about those category of men. We're talking about men who they might have unfortunately been victims of circumstance and been cornered by life's dark hands and... They are, they've just basically internalized a truckload of problems because of people's preconceived notions, because of how they're going to be viewed, because of this and that. So, yeah, we're not talking about waste men like we're talking in the UK. You know, this conversation is not that. It's your boy, Franklin. I've managed to complete another self-inflicted uh, obligation. I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, let's keep that conversation going on below. 
Uh, what do you think? What do you think about hypermasculinity? What do you think we can do better? It's your boy, Franklin, and I'll definitely catch you in the next one. Peace and love. Bye now. What's up, baby? Victoria, I see you. <laughs> love you. Love you. Bye now.